Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. I've seen no time to die. I've seen all two hours, 40 minutes of it. It was a bloody long film. And it's time to, to give my thoughts. It's time to go through a few things. Um, I'm going to do it spoilery, open, because that's the only way I feel I can give my best assessment so if you're looking for a, a, a non-spoiler review uh, of this, I'll just very briefly say this is a very mixed bag of a film. So if you if you go in, if you want to see it, or if you're thinking about seeing it, uh, I think there's going to be stuff here that you're going to like. I think there's stuff here that you're going to really not like uh, as well. Uh, so bear that in mind. That's the only fair way I think I can assess that. So with that said, I'll give one final warning. I will be going into spoilers uh, immediately uh, from the start. Uh, so please beware. Right. Let's get into it. Holy shit. Okay. Um, this film is really weird. Uh, when I came out of the cinema, I was... Uh, I didn't know what to think. I, I I was kind of a little bit numb. I was a little bit numb about what to think about the film. Uh, the main reason, uh, since I imagine you're here for the for the review anyway, the spoiler review anyway, is uh, I've just seen James Bond get killed in his own film. Uh, and even though at the end of the credits... James Bond will return pops up uh it it felt really hollow and it really felt like well how many years now 55 you know 50 something years of of Bond history had kind of been thrown away and reduced down to just Daniel Craig's run as Bond and I I felt it very disrespectful to to all the Bonds prior to that Piers Brosnan um uh George Lazenby Roger Moore Timothy Dalton and of course uh Sean Connery uh the ultimate uh Bond uh, for me uh it kind of felt as if their history of the the Bond franchise was dismissed uh to allow Daniel Craig to have this five film arc even though skyfall seemed to detach itself from that quite a bit whatever so i was i was just really kind of numb uh by it all so let's go through what happens in the actual film and then i'll probably break it down as as we go along uh there's a very lengthy intro normally you get you know a five minute intro uh 10 minute intro of bond doing something and then We'll go into the credits. Well, this was about 20 minutes. About a 20 minute intro because the intro is made up of two separate stories before we, we got into the uh, absolutely god awful uh, Bond theme uh, by is it Billy Elish? I don't know. I'm too old to know these people. But what I can say is um, because this film had connect. This is the really odd thing, you see. This is why I feel very confused by a lot of it. Because it seemed to just be Daniel Craig's own self-contained story. However, uh, there was a connection to uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Um, because they kept... Re well, the reference back to We Have All the Time in the World uh, was mentioned uh, a couple of times. A couple of, th a couple of three times uh, in this by Bond. And it sort of mirrored the ending... The ending sort of mirrored the ending almost of um, uh, On a Majesty's Secret Service where it's Bond who dies and the, the the wife. I'm not sure if they're actually married. I don't think they actually got married or they're just, I don't know. They just got married, whatever, uh, lives in this instance. So we do actually have, um, uh, we have all the time in the world played on, on a few occasions throughout the course of the movie. Uh, which is a significantly better Bond theme 
than the one from Billy Elish. Can I just say that? Um, I know I'm sort of I might be all over the place, but my thoughts are still even a day later. I thought I I got home from the cinema, folks, and I just went to bed because I'd been awake since Friday night tight. So I've been awake all night uh, through to the cinema, then went home, then went to bed, uh, then woke up about uh, 5 a.m. this morning. So my thoughts are still really sort of fresh and confused about it. But we begin with uh, Madeline Stone uh, as a kid. Uh, now, of course, uh, from Spectre, we learned that she was Mr. White's daughter. And it uh, starts off with uh, Remy Malik uh, in a mask, in that like porcelain Oscar mask from WWE, uh, going to his wife's house and killing his wife because Mr. White had killed all of Remy Ma Malik's um, family. Now, I should really bring up the names of the characters from the film here. I gotta, I gotta confess. Uh, he's called Safin. Remy Malik's character is Safin in this. And this is the last time that we're going to see him for a significant period of time. Uh, and he kills uh, Madeline's mum, and then she... A appears to kill him but doesn't obviously uh she runs out of the house in the snow onto this uh onto this ice lake the uh the lake he he goes after her after recovering the lakes the the uh, the ice crack she falls in and instead of him he's sort of watching her s suffocate and then he shoots all around her smashes the ice and then saves her life and then it um, jumps to well, it's not current day. It drops to it jumps to five years ago. We think it's current day, where Bond is now in his retired life with Madeline, and they go to this uh, beautiful, uh, what appears to be Mediterranean uh, village somewhere. I don't know where. Don't ask. And it all appears very romantic because they're about to start their new life. Uh, but we soon discover, and it's actually Madeline that says this, we soon discover that um, that uh, Ava Green's Vesper Fairch well, it's not Vesper Fairchild, Vesper Lind uh, in this one. Vesper Lind is buried here. And uh, they, they discuss about uh, secrets amongst each other and... and uh, they talk about burning the past. You write down the name of, of, or you write down your past and then you burn it and it's gone and you can start afresh. And so uh, Bond really wants to go and say goodbye to Vesper and in a, in a sort of way, get her blessing to, to start this new life with Madeline. So he wakes up and he says to her, I'm going to go get breakfast. Uh, it's all kind of romantic. And then he goes to where she's buried and um, uh, he notices there's a card by her grave and he picks up the card and it's the Spectre symbol. And then the grave explodes because try the Spectre's trying to kill Bond. Uh, and he, you get that kind of cool... Where you're all fuzzy and you don't know what's going on. So you know that Bond's sort of probably concussed off his tits. Uh, and then he gets it together and he, he um, tries to get back to the hotel because he thinks it's Madeline that's betrayed him and she's still part of, or she is actually part of Spectre all along. Uh, and along the way, he he's, uh, it's the, a part of this, of course, is from the um, the uh, trailers that you've seen. He uh, He's chased around the village and tried to get killed by the people in this village. Uh, that's where he's on the bike and he does the jump and he does all that sort of stuff and then he gets to the hotel and and uh madeline's just like getting ready and he's just starts shouting arrows to to you know betraying him and she's just like what i don't I, I don't know and he he thinks that she's playing dumb so he gets her into the um db5 and then uh we get that bit where he gets cornered just trapped and the car's getting like shot to pieces and Bond's sort of, I think, almost thinking about just letting them die together. Uh, and then uh, she's begging him that she she's not, she hasn't betrayed him. It's not part, she's not part of this. Please get us out of here. And then um, 
He's still not sure, but there's a part of him that kind of believes it in a way. So he, he fights back. So I'm going to have to turn the heater on. It's freezing in here. So he fights back and, and he gets to a train station. He puts her on a train and he says, you're never going to see me again. And she's just absolutely mortified. Uh, and he leaves her. And then it goes five years later. Now then. Oddly enough, that kind of fits today's modern timeline, even though this film was meant to come out in 2019, 2020. Um, because Spectre came out in 2015. If this happened around about that time, then five years later would have been 2020. But it's, you know, 2021. So it's there or thereabouts. So it's five years later... And um, we get uh, we get this bit where there is a a secret. That's oh, by the way, this is where the credits start. About twenty twenty five minutes into the movie. Uh, after this, we get a a, a a sequence where um, Spectre infiltrate this. Um, they infiltrate this MI six hidden lab, and they steal with the help of one of the scientists who's a member of Spectre. They steal this bio weapon, which is some nanotech device, which will kill you by your DNA. So you can literally specify uh, a, a, a specific individual and, and kill them without killing anyone else around them if you program the virus for their DNA only. We find out later on that this virus can be programmed because it's nanotech. <sighs> because it's nanotech, it can be programmed to target ethnic groups and stuff like that, which have, you know, when we get on to Lashana Lynch later, when she's told that, of course, it's my, my black victimhood. We're going to get on. To, never mind. Um, so anyway, they kill all the scientists apart from the, uh, the Spectre dude and they nick the virus. We then go to, to Bond, who's uh, living away underneath the mango tree, my honey and me. So there are, again, it's weird because the sort of references back to other Bond films like Dr. No. And I mean, Remy Malik's base is very Dr. No-esque. And he kind of reminds me very much of uh, the Dr. No character. And of course, Dr. No was the first Bond film. So there does seem to be like some wrapping up going on here. But like I said, but it just seems to want to self-contain Daniel Craig's five Bonds. I don't know. Like I said, it's weird. It's weird. But anyway, Bonds on his desert island getaway. Uh, he's living there. Uh, he realizes someone's broken into his house and they've left the butt of a cigar. And he realizes it's uh, Felix Leiter. So he goes to this bar in the local town and he meets up with Felix, uh, Felix and Felix is like, uh, hey, dude, this uh, virus got uh, nicked and uh, would like you to recover it for us. We know you're freelance. You're not working for um, MI6 anymore. And uh, I think the idea was implanted there. I'm not too sure that it's uh, it could have actually been M who who wanted this virus made, which we'd later find out was kind of the truth uh, because he wanted a less messy way of being able to take out targets. Instead of mass destruction, you could have a very specific vi uh, a virus which was programmed to somebody's DNA or a group of people's DNA. Uh, anywho, uh, Bond's just like, not interested, Phoenix. Uh, I'm out of the business completely. Felix has got a new partner who's just like very cheerful and oh you're you're a big hero of mine Mr. Bond and all this sort of thing and he's just like I don't trust you friend he smiles too much uh good thing by the way because he turns out to be a, a, a member of Spectre later and anyway uh this is where he bumps into Lashana Lynch in the um the bar that they're at and she's got this like long wig on and stuff and um he goes to his car to leave his car's broken so Lashana, Lasa, sorry, Lasagna Lynch turns up on a on a Vespa, on a Vespa scooter. You see the references? They're there. 
She turns up on it uh, and um, says, uh, do I need a ride? Because she's putting on a Jamaican accent, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's okay if black people do that, I guess. But mm -hmm. uh, And uh, so he gets on the back of it and uh, she, she says, you know, he goes to her pl to his place. She just comes, walks in and then immediately says, where's the bedroom? And he's just like, oh, okay. So he pours himself a drink. He's drinking a lot. It's again, it's kind of showing that Bond is basically an alcoholic uh, in this. He's drinking a whole lot. And he goes into the bedroom and she's pulled off a wig. And she's and she's just like, I'm um, from MI6. Keep out of our way. You old bastard. Type of type of business. So it's it's uh it's her just talking shit at him. So uh anyway, because of this, he he calls up Felix and he's just like, Yeah, no, Felix, uh yeah, I'm gonna take you up on your offer because he's just like, fuck this bitch who's come in, which I quite liked actually. And and of course, the trailers never showed any of Bond's clapbacks to her, which he does all the time. It just showed Bond in this pathetic light, um, which is not the case in this film. He he gives as good as he gets. There are a couple of moments where he doesn't, but the, the this bit which I'm just about to describe was actually quite good because the person involved in this was fucking awesome. And the next part is he goes to this party. He meets up with his CIA operative, um, Paloma, who's played by uh, Ana de Armas. And she is just stunning, like ridiculously fit. And I felt for a moment, oh, hello, we're actually in a Bond film at last. He's in a tux. They're at a party. They've got guns stashed away. Um, they're on a secret mission. This is her first time. Well, this is like, she claims to be a bit of a rookie. Um... And she's very nervous and she's like knocking back a couple of drinks and stuff. And uh, it's actually really good. And her character is so cool. Um, it just connects really well because she's kind of skittish, but really good at what she does. And so she comes across uh, as a really kind of like cool character. And I really, and the annoying thing is she's in the film for like 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And then he, they just leave her. And uh, she would have been freaking awesome uh, for longer. But they turn up at this Spectre party. And I think it's like Blofeld's birthday or some shit. I gotta confess, some of it, some of it I just couldn't... I was just distracted by other stuff. <laughs> and um, they, uh, there's this eye that's being taken round the room. And anyway, this eye is connected back to Blofeld, who's locked away in London. So he's kind of living a life through this eye. And uh, the eye identifies Bond. He's like, ha ha, now it's time for you to die, Mr. Bond, with this cool little virus which I've stolen. But the guy from Spectre who had stolen it has swapped the DNA sequencer in the virus because he actually works for Safin for Rami Malik. Rami Malik. And so the virus, when it's let loose, actually starts to kill all the members of Spectre and not Bond. And so they have this great little shootout sequence with um uh, Paloma and she's absolutely kick ass. And so she's she's like kicking the ass of all these people and Bond's like struggling with this one dude and i know it's it would be easy to say oh yeah the woman kicks the shit out of all the guys and bond's just struggling with this one but it's kind of like it fits because he's the confident he's the confident one that's done this for so long and she's like the new one which hasn't and so she's the one who's struggling for confidence and he's not but then they reverse it and it actually kind of kind of worked um and she doesn't come across as like a bitch She's, she's nice. She's very affable. It's amazing when you make women like this how appealing that they can be. Whereas Lasagna Lynch's character throughout the whole of this movie is just an obnoxious cow who serves no purpose than to uh, be an antagonist to Bond for no reason. 
uh other than uh she's got his call sign because yes she is 007 and um they get out you know they 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 capture the uh scientist guy and they they get out and he leaves paloma and that's the last time we see her which is a shame and he takes him to felix and felix is with his partner and then that partner turns out to be a member of spectre uh, not a member of spectre sorry uh working for uh remy malik safin uh and so they kill felix lighter they kill Felix Leiter. I feel I don't I feel like being a bit sarky here, so I think I'm gonna be a bit sarky. Uh this film is uh Bond Dead, Felix Dead, Q Gay, 007 Black Woman. <laughs> that that sums up that sums up this movie in a in a in a nutshell at times it really kind of uh feels like it so felix lighter dies and uh the guy the other guy gets away with the um scientist and bond just struggles to to get out alive and he um he gets picked up by some huge ship next time we see him he's in london he's been summoned to um or he goes into MI6. Uh, he has to wear a visitor's badge because he's no longer a member there. Uh, M wants to speak to him alone without... Uh, yeah, Lasana, Lasana Lynch, you know, she she's like walks alongside him when he's walking to see M. And she's just like, oh, by the way, I'm not just any old double O. I'm double O seven. You know, just really kind of like, I'm a fucking massive bitch. And Bond just says, it's only a number, and walks off. So, you, you know, and we all know it's not just a number, but it's just like, what is the point of this character? Just no point. No point in this character. Anyway, he goes to CM, and then this is where he uh, he kind of goes in all in on, on M. He's just like, uh, has your desk got smaller? Has your desk got bigger, or did you get smaller? And M's just, you know, so like, I'll piss off. And M's drinking a lot as well. And uh, he shouts at M saying, you were the one who wanted this virus. And M was just, so they have the huge kind of ding dong. Bond, uh, Bond storms out. And then he goes to, he get Miss Money Penny helps him and they go to Q's place. And Q's cooking a romantic dinner. And he's like, oh, come on, he's going to, He's going to be here in 20 minutes or something. So it's just like, oh, there's a nice throwaway line that uh, that Q's gay. Uh, you know, a nice throwaway line like a Star Wars lesbian kiss. And most likely edited out just as um, easily as well for various audiences. Because it's all virtue signaling trash. That's all it is. Virtue signaling trash. So he's got a he's got a drive of all the um the information on that he gives to Q and it and it and it shows off the um uh the like the DNA sequences and, and what the what the thing can do. Then um we uh M and Bond kind of make up, shall we say? And Bond's reassigned double O status, but it's not said what double O, because he can't be double O seven. So we don't know what double O he is temporarily, but he's granted back his double O status. Uh, M just throws away again. M throws away the line of uh, what What have we got available? As if to kind of say that there's that they're missing a few double O's, you know, or there's possibly a few double O's that are dead. Uh, and they have those uh, those ones available. So he, he wants to go see um, Blofeld. And at the same time, Madeline Swan now is the is the psychiatrist of um, Safin or something like that. It's, it's, it's kind of a little bit weird and convoluted. But she's the, the psychiatrist, I think, maybe a Blofeld as well. Or she's going to see Blofeld. But um, 
it looks like Safin's given her, her a vial. And that vial's containing the virus. And that virus, you can work out. I mean, it doesn't take the brain of Britain to. That virus is going to be coded to, to kill Blofeld. Um, so Bond meets Madeline for the first time in five years. And he just tries to be like a, not a dick to her, but he just tries to be a straight up, nothing ever happened. Hello, Mrs. Swan. Uh, James Bond. And she's just like, I ain't fucking shaking your hand. Uh, and then they go in the room uh, together because Madeline's all, she's like really shaking and stuff. And he's like, why are you shaking? And and she tries to make a couple of excuses and she can't go in the room when Blofeld, Blofeld starts to come towards her. And so she like, she wants out. But when she wants out, Bond grabs her by the wrist and she's rubbed the virus on her wrist together like how women do when they put perfume on then they rub their wrist together to spread the perfume spread the perfume around why did i why did i do that i don't have perfume on my wrists whatever so bonds grabbed and now has on his hand the nanovirus so uh he speaks to blofeld blofeld kind of gloats a bit uh and and winds bond up and bond then end, ends up grabbing blofeld by the neck and saying die die and then let's go and blofeld thinks he's sort of won and then when the um the uh the cage starts getting retracted they look back and blofeld's dead so bond then goes in search of madeline so he goes to her house which we see in the beginning of the film when she was a girl and uh Safin killed her mum and he turns up and he's there and and uh, she's there and they kind of reconnect for a second and he's just about to kiss her and she's just about to kiss him again and then they hear a noise and it's a girl it's a little girl and the little girl is Bond's daughter it's the daughter that she had in the five years she was pregnant he got her pregnant he didn't know and she had a baby, and it's Bond and her's baby. So he's like, we've got to get you out of here, because we think uh, they find out that Safin, uh, 007 is tracking Safin's group, and Safin's group are on the, on the island that Bond's at. And he's like, I told, she's not meant to be tracking me, and like, she's not. So of course, Bond realizes if she's there, then they're there. So he, he, gets, he gets them out in a, in a, you know car and then um they get that they get into that fight in the forest that you see in the trailers and it's brutal it's like um if a car gets like knocked over bond just like fucking shoots the shit out of the the people who are inside of it there's just like no mercy here at all uh sets traps up for uh the bikers so they they uh grot themselves basically um and uh, he has to leave Madeline and his daughter while he fights them, but Safin captures them. So Safin's now got them on his Doctor No Island, and Bond's got to go save her uh, on the Doctor No Island. So he goes with 007, and uh, before they go, Bond, again, just shows his humanity because he's wanting to to save his wife and his daughter and then 007 realizes that she's just a massive cunt and so uh she's just like permission for uh 007 uh to regain his uh, 007 code name so they're like fine uh so they go to the um the base they plant a bunch of explosives they get the um that scientist dude again uh, but then that scientist dude is like uh, talking about how the virus can be uh, used to to code races, and he and he says it at Lashana Lynch as if to say we're gonna kill the blacks. So she's like, "Do you know what time it is? It's time for you to die." And then she throws him off this bridge into like this vat of acid which people are doing something in, which, I don't know, cultivates the virus. I don't know. So he gets, like, uh, burnt alive. Meanwhile, Bond's gone off looking for uh, Safin, but Safin's got his daughter. 
So Bond uh, manages to disarm the people in the room, but Safin gets away. Uh, he meets up with uh, Madeline, uh, and but their daughter gets away as well. So they all end up eventually together. He sends his daughter and her away and says, right, I got to go um, open up these blast doors so that we can bomb this place to smithereens to destroy the uh, the virus because now all the... All these different nations, Japan and Russia and all of this, are, are after the the virus from the Brits. Uh, they want it because they want it to weaponize it. Uh, and so Bond goes and opens up the blast doors, and then uh, he realizes that the uh, the blast doors were closed. So he goes back, and then uh, Safin is still there, and Safin shoots him a few times. So Bond's now been shot multiple times um he's been shot in like the arm i think he's been shot in like the, the upper torso the leg uh at least three times he's been shot and then um safin comes in to finish him off but he gets too close a bond grabs him and they have a fight uh safin scratches him uh and uh, then Bond breaks Safin's arm, so he's com he's like s like snaps his arm very nastily. So he 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 can't he's like out the game now. And then he tells Bond that uh, now that I've scratched you, you've been infected with the virus, uh, and this virus is coded. Uh, I got to admit, I sort of I was sort of dipping a little bit here and there because this is a long film, and I was really tired at this point. So my my concentration levels were waning a little bit. And I don't know if he said this virus makes you deadly to everyone, but I, I think he said that this virus now makes you deadly towards Madeline. So if you get anywhere near Madeline, you'll kill her. So he knows that he can, he or, or Madeline and his daughter, so he knows he can never be near his family again. Uh, so he's, he's shot to pieces. He's, he's had to go back and reopen the blast doors. He knows he can't go back to um, his family. He picks up the gun and just shoots Safin three times and kills him. Then uh, he gets onto the microphone, uh, not the mic, you know, the headset, whatever, and just says, I need to speak to my family. And he's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm too badly, you know, I'm too shot up. I, I'm not going to be able to get out. I can open up the blast doors, but I can't get out. So I'm done. I'm done. Uh, so he has a, like a nice little goodbye to um, his wife. And then he gets, uh, manages to climb out of the silo. And then uh, these like cluster bombs come down and literally just see him stood there and he just goes, <laughs> wipes him out. Just absolutely uh, obliterates him. Uh, so Bond is just blown up to smithereens. And then it ends with... Um, it ends with uh, M and Q and uh, all that lot uh, just giving him a toast. And M, I think, reads from an Ian Fleming book, <laughs> which is a little bit ironic, of course. Uh, and then, um, uh, yeah, we just have um, Madeline and the and the daughter driving driving away and she's like i want to tell you a story about a man called bond and his daughter just smiles and that's it credits roll uh will um james bond will return what he'll return as who knows a woman a transgender who knows and i know i'm being really kind of like flippant and cynical now but it's it's is this 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 weird closure is to say okay we're now closing the book on uh ian fleming's version of james bond and and from here on in we're going to have the hollywood uh diversity and inclusion james bond incoming you know i don't know it just kind of it kind of felt a little bit a little bit like that um there were there was stuff which just didn't kind of make a lot of sense in the film um like nanotech yeah sure i mean you know it's kind of it's space rockety and everything but 
Bond was given an, an EMP device, which he uses throughout the um, course of the uh, film. Uh, an EMP would destroy nanobots, would they not? Because they are electronic devices at the end of the day. So he could have just used the EMP to disable the nanobots. You know, I don't know. Um, it was quite clear that Felix's partner, whatever you want to call him, um, was, was dodgy as fuck. So why Bond didn't follow through a bit better on his uh, hunch that the guy was untrustworthy? Don't know. Lasagna Lynch's character is completely redundant in the whole film. Um, but the opening sequence in the village was excellent. The chases were excellent. The fight scenes were excellent. The acting is excellent. Um, but there's just this disconnect that I have. This weird sort of disconnect that it didn't really feel like a Bond film. It kind of felt like a, a, a member of the SAS was going on one final mission or something. It just didn't, but it didn't feel like Bond. Um, the times that it did feel like Bond was when Paloma was there. She was awesome. And I felt, yeah, that felt like, yes, now we've got the proper dynamic. A kick-ass woman uh, who's likable um, and, and capable uh, and Bond doing his doing his thing. Hopefully, normally likable and capable, but you know, you get what you can get nowadays, I suppose. Uh, so, so ultimately, it's a mixed bag. There was stuff that I liked, and there was plenty of stuff that I I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like the killing of Bond one bit because, like I said, it just felt like there was sort of bookending or saying goodbye to Ian Fleming's vision. And now Hollywood's vision's going to take over from here on in. And that just scares the living shit out of me. Um, yeah, so it's it's a weird one, folks. It's a weird one. Um, I don't know. I still, I still can't, like, I can't, I couldn't grade this out of 10 at the moment. I just don't know how to feel about it. I just really don't. Um... You know, some very good performances, some very good sequences, uh, silliness, unnecessary, unnecessary silliness, but really good, uh, really good action sequences, um, really good stunts. But I didn't feel like Safin was much of a threat at all as a villain. He didn't appear to be the main focus as a villain. The main focus appeared to be at uh, the um the love story between madeline and and bond um which i think i think kind of got in the way a little bit of of bond himself i don't know i i i still think i i, I don't know how divisive this is going to be but bond dying at the end of bond no way no way uh, the the uh, the way that they they threw away Q being gay again, uh, just Hollywood cowardice not to commit. Uh, it was done in such a way that that can be cut out for audiences around the world who don't agree with homosexuality, and no doubt it will be. Um, so it felt half-assed. Money Penny didn't get much of a look in at all in this, uh, which was a shame. Um, because she's had quite a nice little connection with Bond throughout this, uh, this run. Uh, when she came in in, uh, Spyfall. So, yeah, it was a shame that she didn't get much of a rub either. And, uh, yeah. Uh, characters that we should, we should have maybe have got more of, we didn't. But there you go. Felix got a bit of a short shrift. I don't know. It was, like I said, it's really, a really weird film. Um, but there you go. There you go. Uh, a weird one is the best way that I can describe it. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this uh, little Bond discussion, review, chat, whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, if you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and YouTube for live streaming. Links are in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.